Hey, 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 welcome to my channel, The Ultimate Survivor here. Um, on this channel, we talk much about things that happens in Africa. We talk in detail about African countries, African cultures, whatever we have, the heritage sites and stuff like that, tourism related. We talk about nature because when you think of Africa, you think of wildlife and nature. So we've got so many things that we value in Africa, and especially our nature. So that's what we have. That's what our ancestors left for us. Trees, animals, birds, and stuff like that. So us living in Africa as Africans, the true Africans, we need to conserve. We need to look after those things and keep them for our future generations. So as our great-grandfathers did to keep these things for us so that we can see them. We want our grandchildren and their um, grand-grandchildren to see what's happening and what's taking place in Africa and what is there in Africa. You know, some of the animals are now actually diminishing. They are facing extinction because of certain things, drought, poaching, and stuff like that. The same applies to the trees as well. And the plants that we have in Africa, you know, Africa is actually so proud of its trees and plants because most of the medicine that is there made in Africa is it actually comes from the trees that we have or from the herbs that we have. So we have to conserve them and we have to know them and we have to utilize them in a manner that we know that they're going to last for years and years. Yes, trees have brought so many things in our lives. Employment. Because people are harvesting these things for timber and um, these timber companies are employing a lot of people. We see some street vendors there, the curio vendors. They are selling some wooden carved items like animals and stuff like that. You go to countries like Zimbabwe, South Africa, you go to Kenya, you go wherever you can go. You find some young people making these wooden carvings and they're making a living out of this. So we need to conserve these things. How are we going to go about doing this? So I'm just going to give you the introduction into our trees and how important they are to us. And also we go on to share how people manage these trees as well. So it's going to be a long topic, but we're going to cut it short. Each and every day, we're going to have a session. So if you want to learn more about Africa, the culture, the heritage, the trees whatsoever, the animals, and also the tourism that happens in Africa, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. And please don't forget to activate that notification bell so that whenever I drop another video, you are notified and you learn more about Africa. For those who want to visit Africa, this is a very good uh, information. It's a piece of information that you need to carry with you. Just an introduction so that you know what's taking place in Africa. Then here in Africa, especially in Southern Africa, where tourism is much appreciated, we have the guides. Safari guides, tour guides, and stuff like that. They need this information. If you are one of those people, please make sure to follow this channel. Each and every time I drop a video concerning wildlife and nature, you are going to learn something new. Because we're going to dig deeper, talking about animals, talking about different things that we have. And we're going to go into detail about guiding stuff. You know, in countries like Zimbabwe, we have those um, guides who are still learning. We call them the LPHs, the Learner Professional Hunters or Guides. So these people, they need the lessons like this. They need to learn and know how to preserve and how to actually uh, present themselves when it comes to nature and how they should respect the nature. And also we'll talk in detail about how we respect our animals when we are doing hard guiding. So it will be like a habits and habitats of the animals. Okay, thank you so much. So as we go on, we are talking now about how trees are important into our lives. One, trees gives us oxygen. To breathe so whenever we have trees in abundance we know that we have the clean air that we breathe that's number one thing that we need you know this whole world is full of this ozone layer with the gases that are emitted from the um, automob automobiles that we have the cars from the factories wherever we are the ozone layer is rising that means we are now breathing the dirty air but we need oxygen so from the trees, that's where we can get oxygen, clean air to breathe. Number two, the plants are a source of food, especially in Africa. 
you know, our great grandfathers used to be hunters and gatherers. So they used to gather the fruits and also the leaves from the trees. They eat them. We eat them. The roots as well. We have some trees that provide very, very good content of water when you chew the roots. And by so doing, your immune system is boosted all the time. So that's how we are in Africa. And we have to respect that. So we have to keep these trees. And also these trees will act as a windbreaker. They are windbreakers. If you go to places that have got lots of trees, you will find out that there is less damage from the strong winds because the wind is blocked by these trees each and every time we have the trees. So we need to have more trees so that we are protected from the dangerous winds. Number three, these woods or these trees, they provide wood for furniture. As I said earlier, these big companies that make furniture, they go out there make their applications, then they start cutting trees. They make furniture. They make money. They make a living. They, and the, our houses are decorated just because of these uh, trees and wood. So we need them. It's a source of income. That's where our employment comes from. So we have to respect that. The curio vendors st selling on the streets. If there wasn't any trees, what were they going to sell? So they need to respect that. Number four, shelter for other animals that we have in Africa, which is our pride. These animals that live in the wild, some of them live in the burrows or the caves that are found in the trees, on the tree trunks. Some of them live right on their own, on I mean, build their nests on the trees, on the branches and stuff like that. And it gives them shelter. So we need to conserve trees because we need these animals as much as they need us. Then we they also see the manure coming from the trees. You know, most, um, most of the times, I mean, the trees are growing naturally in the world, of course, in Africa. So the manure that they get so that they have nutrients to grow comes from other trees. You know, when they shed off their leaves, falling into the ground, they actually rot, making the manure and also the mulching on the ground so that the soil doesn't lose much water when the heat comes. So we need trees. That's the truth. And also, the trees will prevent soil erosion. Go to the places where there is less trees and you see how much soil erosion is taking place. There is so much damage there. But wherever there is lots of trees, go to the thick forests. Nothing like that. Wind erosion, water erosion, nothing like that because the roots are binding the soil particles together. So that's another importance of trees. Okay. The trees as well makes the whole ecosystem to run. If we don't have trees or plants, the ecosystem won't actually be complete. So we need that. They also act as a lightning con con conductors. Go to the villages. People don't build um, artificial uh, conductors. They use the natural ones, the trees. In each and every homestead, there is a big tree that is right in the middle of the homestead. Whenever lightning comes, it strikes that big tree. Hence, it saves the, the, the lives of the people. So it's a conductor as well. And also, it purifies the environment. Without the trees, I'm just wondering how the whole world was going to look. We have seen people trying by all means to plant their trees, to do all sorts of things. That's beautifying that nature. But if you happen to have the trees naturally, please try by all means to conserve them. And you have to respect that. That's a God-given gift. I tell you, come to Africa and see what I'm talking about. Driving all the way around the African um, uh, bushes, you see how beautiful it is, especially during the rain season. All lush green grasses, the flowers growing naturally, the trees will be green. You know, it's so thick. It's so amazing. You know, it's so breathtaking. So we have to respect all that. Okay. How did our great-grandfathers preserve or conserve trees? They had their own ways. If they didn't, we were not going to find any trees because they were here millions of years before us. But they used to conserve trees. The way they used the trees actually showed that they wanted to keep them for their future uh, children or grandchildren. When they were harvesting um, trees for firewood, 
they would look for dead trees, the dry ones, not the fresh ones like we see other people doing nowadays. No, they would go for the dead ones. That's how they will make firewood. And also the selection of the type of wood that makes firewood. You know, in Africa, we have something that is called a taboo. It was a taboo to use certain types of trees as firewood. They would tell you that something bad is going to happen to your homestead. This and that is going to... Some, someone is going to fall ill, you know, bad luck. So don't ever try to burn such, such type of a tree for firewood. So that's another way of conservation. And also when they were harvesting um, poles for building their huts, we know that they, they, they built their huts using poles and mud. There was a selection of certain tree species. And also, they were not just cutting them all, like, all over the place. They would just jump around. You cut one here, you go to another place, then you find another one. That's how they would preserve the trees. Not just clearing the whole thing. One pole here, you walk for about five kilometers, for five meters or ten meters, fifty meters, you find another one, you cut it there. That's how you try to maintain the tree um, population or whatsoever in the same area. Number three, they were scraping a certain portion of the bug when they were looking for medicine. Not everything, a certain portion. They will tell you that you have to go to the eastern side of a tree, scrap the bark. Then you go to the western side of a tree, you scrap the bark. Then you will leave, you go. Don't take the whole thing. Don't take down the tree, the whole tree. If it was the root, they tell you, you go dig on the eastern side, cut a piece of a root. You go to the western side, cut a piece of a wood, then cover the ground so that the evil spirits won't follow into that wall. But you cover the ground. Why were they covering? That's trying to make that tree to grow, not to die. So that's preservation. And also, when they made their concoction, they would reuse it, maybe for a week. Just place the box in the bottle of water. You keep on adding water. Once you finish, add some more water. Then you reuse it again. You don't use it once, then you throw it away. It was recycled or reused so that you don't go back and uh, cut another root or another bark. That's preservation or conservation. Then applying rituals to medicine harvest, harvesting. You know, it wasn't a duty of anyone to go and harvest their own medicine. There were certain people who were doing that. And they would practice a ritual before they do that. So you know that if you go there and you don't know how to practice that ritual, it won't work for you. So you have to find someone who knows how to practice the ritual. So by so doing, they're minimizing the number of people who are cutting down the trees or who are scraping the bugs or digging the roots and, and just assigning a few people to do that so that the trees won't get finished in no time. Okay. And also, they left a number of trees in their fields when they were clearing the fields or the farms to, 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 to do their farming. You have to leave a number of trees in that uh, field. You go in the field, you find maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, depending on how big the field is. That's conservation. That's our great-grandfathers. They were very intelligent. And that intelligent, intelligence has to be passed on to us. And we have to pass it on to our children. Nowadays, there are so many programs like the National Tree Planting Days in different countries of Africa. You know, we have to utilize that chance. If it ever happens that you hear of that, please go out there and try to plant your own trees. Please, if you are enjoying this program, don't forget to leave the comment below and also let me know where you are watching from and how we can improve this uh, program. And also don't forget to like, to share and to subscribe our channel because you're going to learn more. This is just the beginning. There is a lot that is coming. You know, Africa is loaded. It's so loaded and you have to learn these things from an African. I'm a true African. I was born and raised in the village. I know everything. So I'm talking from experience. So you are getting this from the horse's mouth. So please, let's continue and see how we can help one another. So now, nowadays, with this modern life that we're living in, how are people conserving trees or preserving trees for their future generations? Please, that's a question. Drop it in the comment box right below.
tell me how are you trying to conserve trees for your future generations i'm sure you won't like uh you won't like it and you won't enjoy it when the trees are finished before your grandchildren are born so you have to leave them a legacy so how are you trying to conserve trees okay there are so many th ways that um, many authorities or governments are trying to conserve trees introduction of the authorities that enforces the law on how the trees are utilized that's number one the forestry commission in some countries i don't know in, how you call it in your own country but my country that's zimbabwe we call it the forestry commission these guys enforces the law they make sure that people are not cutting trees just randomly and also they make sure that people are using dead trees for firewood for whatever um furniture they are carving and stuff and also they make sure that there is an application that you make you apply to the authority to go and cut those trees or those pieces of wood then if you are granted that permission they monitor you how you do it you don't just go there you clear the bush then you get the trees or the woods and stuff like that for yourself there is a procedure that needs to be followed and also this forestry commission makes sure that people plant trees you know we have some indigenous trees that grow in the world naturally and we also have some exotic trees that are planted there you know we talk of the pine trees the gum trees and stuff like that these are all exotic but they are planted in our environment in zimbabwe for our furniture purposes and stuff so this is the work of the forestry commission and that's what they actually are looking into and also how do the villages do this in the villages we've got the authorities as well the village heads we have the chiefs we have the headmans and stuff like that these people make sure that people don't just cut trees randomly be it in your field be it wherever you stay there is a procedure that needs to be followed so if you don't abide by the rules the law will be on your neck so that's another way of uh, conserving these trees and also when you are looking for firewood make sure that you pick the dead ones but are the people following that what do you think on the comment box please tell me are the people from your village or from your communities following that from my own perspective my answer is no we have seen people selling firewood along the roads we've seen people selling charcoal along the roads they're selling like heaps tons of charcoal where are they getting that from i mean the charcoal that they they sell comes from the fresh trees the fresh wood that makes me feel so sad because they go out there they use firewood to bend down the big trees fall down then they cut it into pieces bend that tree into ashes into uh, sorry into charcoal then they sell that so if the business grows if the demand is growing the demand of charcoal that means they won't stop how are we going to stop the demand of this charcoal this comes into our authorities as well the forestry commission and also our leaders how is the supply of electricity in the cities if the supply is very low that means people who exert into buying charcoal and also if the rates are very high of purchasing electricity that means people will just exert into buying firewood along the streets and also the charcoal that comes from um, undocumented trees that are bent in the bush but anyway what can we do living in the developing countries it's actually a challenge so there is nothing much that you can do but we have to try by all means to stop that we have to try by all means to minimize the use of charcoal to minimize the use of firewood especially if you notice that this charcoal comes from the fresh wood that was cut in the bush we need to use the dry ones that's how we can conserve no dead ones nobody has to support those people who are selling firewood now nah. let's just try by all means to change the direction and look elsewhere and find something that is user friendly that also conserve and uh, preserve our nature i don't know what let's come up with a plan it's me and you
What do you think? It's a very, very big challenge. Okay, so as I said earlier, that uh, the root cause of people cutting down trees like this could be the unemployment. Now, if the unemployment is so high, that means people are trying by all means to make ends meet, to make a living, to take their kids to school, to feed their children. You know, in Africa, we believe in extended families. If you have your mother and your father were still alive, you have to look after them. Your aunties, your sisters, your nieces, nephews and stuff like that, we look um, after one another. So if you don't have a proper or a formal employment, you end up going out there trying to make things work by cutting down trees, by doing all sort of things that would just destroy the environment. So if there was a proper employment, I think some of these things were going to reduce. But there's nothing that we can do the milk is already spilled. Let's try by all means to conserve on our own. Okay, for the furniture producers, please try to plant your own trees. Have your plantation. In African countries, we've got so much land. Go to the government, apply. They give you that piece of land, you plant your own trees. Just in a few years to come, you are harvesting your own trees and you are making timber or furniture from your own trees. Number two, the curio vendors. Try by all means to look for care. Or else, step elsewhere. Don't cut it. That's the best way. And also, the third method, recycle that metal. Get some curio out of the metal. Or the used cans for soft drinks and whatsoever. Recycling. Let's try to recycle much than destroying the trees. That's another way of making things happen. That's another way of conserving our nature, our trees and whatsoever. Remember when we destroy trees, there are so many living organisms that are exposed there. That means they are dying slowly. And at the end of the day, our Africa will never be the same. Let's try to unite together and keep our Africa the same as we found it. So, in the schools, teachers try by all means to teach the kids the importance of trees and also the importance of planting their own trees. Encourage them. If you plant the trees in the schools, name the trees after the children that planted them so that they can nurture them, love them, knowing that it bears their names. So that's another way of encouraging people. Let's go out there, campaign for planting trees. Teach one another at our workplaces, schools, wherever we meet. Let's preach that gospel. Planting trees, that's very important. Plant as much as possible trees so that we keep them for our future generation. Especially the indigenous trees, those that are facing extinction. Let's keep them alive. Let's keep them, keep them afloat. We've seen people in the cities, they're planting mango trees, the lemons, the nudges, they're planting all these exotic trees and forgetting about their own indigenous trees that are diminishing each and every day. Let's try also to revive that and plant them. That will give us the credit. That will give us something to be proud of. Leave something behind that people will look at it and will say like, wow, this man was so great. This is Africa. Please continue to follow my channel, continue to follow my, uh, my lectures or my discussions. This should be like a discussion. Please, as I'm encouraging you to drop your comments on the comment box and also to like the channel and subscribe so that you don't miss any episode of this.